Karen Cole here with Respond Systems. I'm at Superior Therapy with Summer Terry, and what I want to tell you about today is the Respond Laser. There are three main things I want you to know. Number one, it is a true laser. We've done all the FDA testing, and if we've got it in print, it's correct, it's been tested. The next thing is that there's been no negative side effects from using Respond Laser. And the third thing is that we have two heads to go with it. One is 808 nanometers, one is 904. Now you may think, okay, why is that so important? The main thing is that's the exact spin to get it to go deep into the, in this case, a horse's anatomy. It got to get down deep to get to the problem. And that's two different delivery systems, but they both go down deep like that. Now the next thing I want to tell you about is the most important question, or at least the most uh, asked question that we get is how do I check my horse to know where he's sore? You, this does not take the place of a vet and it does not take the place of a wonderful setup system like she has here at Superior Therapy. But you wanna be able to check your horse and know if there's some little something wrong with it. And I'm gonna show you how to do that next. What I wanna to talk to you about is how to check your horse. Use a smooth, ballpoint pen or something smooth, press down, not dig down. You can make any horse flinch, but you want to get a true reading. This is your horse. You want to check them right. First thing you do is check the pole, and then you check down here between the legs. You want it that to be uh, loose. Then you make three lines right there, right here, Coming across the back. Now, if you've got a horse that's flinchy, try it a second or a third time till they're not, and, it, and they'll give you a true reading. And then down here, down here. Now, when you're doing the back, got a little movement there. When you're doing the back, press, press hard, going down that backbone, but do not use your fingernail or anything. Um, with any kind of ridge to it. Now, if they've got a problem on the back, they will drop. Anytime you find a problem in any of these places, what you're going to do is treat it and then go back and check it again the exact same way. Oh, forgot the, I want to be sure that you get down the hamstring. And usually on the hamstring, they may not move here, but they'll flinch here. Um, you'll go back and treat it the exact same way and then go back and check it again. And there should be no movement when you go back to check it. Then just take your hands. You're feeling for any swelling. And usually you can feel heat in your hands too. And you go down and check the legs like that. Um, these horses are at Summers right here. And of course, I can't find anything wrong with them to show you. But the idea being, if you've got a place that they flinch, you treat it, and then you go back and check it again. I know this is simple, but it's a real simple way. We have a lot of the kids that are in rodeo. They can check their own horses, and, and then they can treat them themselves. Once again, there's no negative result from using the laser, and they can do it also. The first thing I want to talk about is treating kissing spine. You will use the cylinder head, it beeps every two seconds, and you will leave it in each spot just for two beeps. And you go down the spine. I won't hold this the entire time, but just giving you an idea of what you do. And just move it after two beeps. Go down the spine. And then when you come back, go down each side of the spine. And then you will do this on the other side also. Okay, I want to show you what to use to calm the horse. Now be sure and do this. Um, a minimum of 20 minutes before you ride them. And we're going to treat, good girl, good guy. 
under the ear. Then you're going to treat in the soft spot above the eye. Of course, you're doing both sides. Then you're going to treat this area right here on the lips. Save that for last. If they fight it too much, just leave this one alone. Yeah. Yeah. But do all of those places and at least 20 minutes before you run them. Give them time. It takes 20 minutes to get the full effect of a laser treatment. And that way they've had time to settle down. All right. Let's come down here to the hawk. And you're going to treat front, three places. Treat the side. Once again, leave it at least two beeps in each place. I'm doing this quickly just to show you. And then do the very same thing on the inside, but be sure you also get once down the front. Now, on the feet, you want to treat around the cornet band just like this and have it pointed down like this. You will use it on the feet and then also be sure to get it back here in the back. If you have to pick the foot up to get it back here good, we'll do that. I'd leave it an extra beat back here on the back. But you'll use this for abscesses, just sore feet and founder. Uh, if you'll get to a founder quick enough, um, it should not even leave a fever ring. Now, for a pre-race treatment, if there's nothing else wrong with your horse, but you just want to double check everything, give them a little bit extra, before a race, you go down. Once again, this is the head that just beeps every two seconds. Leave it in each spot about six seconds. Come down like this. Go down the back for two beeps. Then come down. Check here. Check around the cornet band. Of course, you do all all four legs like that, and then in the back. And this just helps loosen everything up. Just makes them, helps them to stride out, do better. That's if there's nothing else wrong. This just is a real good way to, to get everything moving good before a race. I'm gonna check the stifle here, uh, treat the stifle. And when you're doing that, I want you to check the stifle first. If there's a lot of soreness, there are horses that have never kicked in their life that will kick with a stifle. It's, it's just a very, very tender, tender area. And then treat on the inside. And if there's problems on both, just do the other side too. Uh, it's just a matter of treating the surface one, two, three, one, two, one, two, and then on the inside, same way, and just getting that covered. Now, if you've got a real problem with the stifle, you treat a little bit longer than that. The stifle tightens up. It just loosens that and lets it go back to working like it should be. Gets the blood flow in and out, lets everything just be loose and calm and nice. But if you've got swelling in there, which sometimes you do, you treat around the swelling first. Always, if you've got swelling, treat around the swelling first. Open up the capillary system. Let all that get out first and then treat on them. Because if you've got swelling, it's holding it tight. And that will loosen all that up. Once again, we're just doing down the front, down the side, two beeps in each spot, down the back, and on the other side. Um, if you've got a real problem with it, you're going to treat longer than that. But this is just general, just general soreness in the, that area. Or if you've got swelling, you can use the wide head first 
Once again, it's gentler. And treat around that swelling first, which sometimes you will have in that area. Open up the capillary system, let all that out, and then treat on, on it. If you have inflammation in the hawk, the main thing to remember is any time you have inflammation, you're going to want to treat around the inflammation first. Open up the capillary system, let everything out, and then treat on the problem. Now, you can treat, treat it with either head. If you've got swelling, I like to treat with a wide head first because it's so much gentler to open up that capillary system. And in a few days, when all that's gone, you can then you can just use the cylinder, which of course is, is faster. On the hawk, if you happen to have swelling in the hawk, I like to use the wide head first. Treat around a swelling area first, all the way around it. That opens up the capillary system, lets all of that bad fluid out. Then you go back and treat on the problem. After two or three days and all that swelling's out, then you can use the cylinder head, which is much faster. But to begin with, let's do it gentler. Get all of that out there. If you have swelling, I I normally start on F4 instead of F6, just once again, gentler to let all the blood flow out, let all that swelling get out first. I want to talk about bleeders. Now there are points up on the respiratory points that you can treat, but one of the main thing for bleeders is right here, right behind the saddle. This can even be swollen when you see it and you push right there, be sure and do both sides all across here and I'm using the wide head on that because normally it's swollen and anytime you have swelling you want to gently open up the capillary system to let all that swelling out first so I would treat right here hold it this one has a different beeping like takes a little bit longer but it's a gentler delivery system and treat here 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 and then on the other side in the same places and that will help clear the system of the, these are the actual bleeder points. Now, if you have a mare, I'm going to show you how to check that. Okay, right here, and, and do your hand in front of it. Now, my hands are a little small. You may have to, if your hands are small like mine, you have, may have to go out like this, and right there. Press on that on both sides, and I promise you, if they've got a problem with their ovaries, that they will give in. They will totally give in. Treat both sides, even if one shows a lot more than the other, still treat both sides. And what this does is help them to drop that follicle so that they will be able to go on then and do what they need to do. But if you, if you look at that, every time they turn, they're hitting that, ble that uh, sorry, uh, point for the ovaries, bend right into it and you're not gonna get a good run unless you can get that swelling out. And that's what this will do. Once again, I use this head, the wide head, because it's a gentler. And with those ovary systems, you want to be gentle with it. The next thing I'm gonna do is a colic. Now on the ovaries, right here and right here I was talking about, but the main thing to remember, it's about six inches in front of the flank. Okay. Next, I'm going to do a colic. Now, if you've got a colic, we say call the vet, but while you're waiting for that vet, because you all know sometimes it's just a matter of distance, it takes quite a while to get there. We're going to treat up the flank like this, 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 all the way down, the underline of the stomach here, here, here. Um, once again, I'm using the wide head. They're already tensed up enough. You want it to be done gently but leave it for about 30 seconds in each place and go up, 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 and up. Do that on both sides, starting at the flank, go down, and then up like this. On the colic, we're gonna use the wide head because once again, you need it gentle. They're already tense and tight enough. And you start and you go down the flank leave it in each spot anywhere from 45 seconds to a minute you really need to get in there and get this uh everything relaxed and go down like this once again leaving it for that amount of time put it up on f6 you've got to get deep in there 
to make sure, and six is the highest setting. Like this. Go to the other side and do the other side the very same way. Then you take the horse and lunge him or put him in the trailer. Sometimes that'll help do the trick too. Um, okay, let me show you the, the navel point. Now, I'm just gonna mention this. There's sometimes you have a horse that you know is not giving you everything it's got. And you can do that with either head, but just treat that navel. Um, with the wide head, it would be about um, for a minute before, uh, before you run, I mean a minute, about 30 minutes out from when you run them, or with the other head for about uh, three or four beeps. Do the navel, and this is a sea of energy point on the horse. And that just gives you a little bit extra pep that maybe you didn't have before. Um, we had a girl down in Florida one time that she just said her horse just would not run for her. Now, truly, I think her horse was just protecting her. She wasn't the best rider in the world, but that's beside the point. But what it would do, when it came out, she was hanging on for dear life, she thought, because the horse just had so much more energy. And it's just, uh, uh, once again, it's one of the points on a horse.